From the White House to Capitol Hill, for seven months, congressional Republicans have taken a sharply partisan route on health care. They've made several attempts to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, which have failed. But why did Republicans go partisan in the first place? It's part of a cultural shift in Congress, years in the making for both parties. Our Lisa Desjardins explains. Congress these days has an obvious theme. I should think that every Republican should be embarrassed. Our Democratic friends are just trying to make it more difficult for President Trump to do his job. We urge our Republican colleagues to change their tune. More blame than legislation on the floor. Veteran GOP Senator Susan Collins of Maine has long been considered one of its most bipartisan members, but she admits it's becoming harder. We are in a time of hyperpartisanship that is unlike any other that I've seen in my time in the Senate. Some examples this year. Republicans going it alone on health care with a partisan House vote That's the group. and a Republican only closed door process in the Senate. Democrats forcing symbolic late night sessions and boycotting committee hearings, slowing the legislative process to a near stop. And this month, Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blamed Democrats for his decision to postpone the Senate's August recess. Due to this unprecedented level of obstruction that we've been experiencing, we will be in session the first uh, two weeks of August. All just five weeks after this. A gunman opening fire on a Republican baseball practice, leaving House Majority Whip Steve Scalise initially in critical condition and still recovering. The attack brought a chorus of calls for bipartisanship. We are not one caucus or the other in this House today. We are united. Later that day, the managers of the Republican and Democratic teams urged an end to the sharp divide. We have an R or a D by our name, but the, our title... Our, our title is United States uh, Representative. Okay, Joe. That's good. We caught up with Representatives Joe Barton and Mike Doyle again and asked if things have changed. There's no cure for this, and, 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 and it's not just our responsibility. Uh, bipartisanship either gets fanned or, 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 you know, encouraged by outside forces, too. But both say too many members get attention now with sharp words. At the end of every two years, you want to go home and say, man, I, I gave a heck of a press conference. Or do you want to put something else on your wall that you got a bill signed into law? Barton admits he was once a young bomb thrower and accepts some blame for his party. When I got elected, I joined the Gingrich group. So I was a part of the problem at the time. In the 1994 Republican Revolution, then new Speaker Gingrich made partisan battles a central strategy. Years later, in 2013, Democrats upped the partisan ante, changing Senate rules to push through some nominees with no Republican votes. Of course, partisanship, even extreme partisanship, is as old as Congress itself. From duels to a near fatal beating inside the Senate chamber to this staircase outside the House chamber, where you can still see what's said to be bloodstains from where a newspaper reporter shot a former member of Congress in 1890. Mr. Sullivan, aye. Ms. Hirono, no. But divide can have a purpose, says Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report. I don't think partisanship in and of itself is a bad thing. The challenge is when that alone is what prevents people from working together to do other things. Part of the trouble, fewer moderates. Data from the Cook Political Report shows that 20 years ago, more than a third of all House districts were moderate, voting similarly to the nation as a whole. But since then, House districts have become more partisan, red or blue, and the number of moderate or swing seats has fallen by half. And they've all been replaced by ideologues, either on the left or the right. One reason, special interest groups on the left and the right are spending record amounts of money in ads and increasingly scoring lawmakers' votes on sometimes narrow issues. Again, Susan Collins. Unfortunately, there's a lot of pressure from outside special interest groups to toe the party line. They want 100 percent fidelity, 100 percent of the time, to 100 percent of their views. 
And if you deviate, you are going to feel the consequences. All this underscores how a major issue like health care remains unresolved, and it sets up a great struggle. To get anything done, Republicans in power may soon have to work with Democrats. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins.